we got a new map! That's awesome. It is the 10 micron GM 1000 HPS, which and is one of the best mounts for amateurs right now. She is gorgeous and amazing. And I would love to talk about her more, but it is so hot outside and I it's get that summer glow and glisten, but maybe we can finish this off at home. Let's go explore at home. Honestly, it's, it's pretty crazy. So we got this mount from our friend Mark, who uh, called us after we struggled with a mighty mount for about a year. And after following our struggles, he decided to give us this mount, which is insane. Of um, course, we think that this is so generous. And although we were like, we don't think that we deserve this, he was very, very encouraging and let us know that it's okay to just accept a gift. So we're not gonna like a gift horse in the mouth. We're gonna take it and run with it and just see what we can do. I mean, again, this is like the most amazing mount. Yes, because Mark has been helping us so much. Mark is like our, uh, kind of like an angel here. So uh, anyway, if we won't you know, complain for like half an hour on how we feel bad and stuff. So we'll just be happy and uh, use this mount uh, pretty much all the time now. So it's going to be our full time, I mean, our uh, long term like advanced, for life mount. Dedicated. Yes. So um, let's go with the video. Uh, we're going to uh, we're show you guys some things. Yeah, set it up and mm -hmm. talk about what's special about this mount. Let's go. Here is what the mount looks like in the case it came with. And here it is on the tripod. And finally, here it is with a telescope and ready to image. Let's talk about the tripod first. So let's go over this tripod really quickly. So what we have here is the Geoptic tripod and it is made in Italy which is super duper cool and as you can see it's already different from the mounts that we've had before because it is made out of wood. And uh, it does have some similarities to the tripods we've had before. It still has a bubble level which is right here. Uh, this uh, base here is removable, you can switch it out so you can do different mounts which is really neat. Um, it has these levers here which open and close the legs individually. We also have this middle part here where you put uh, the lenses and as you can see in the legs too there are also holes and you know typically we don't use these for lenses most of the time this and probably this so we might use it for cable management and what we have here that is different and really really neat is the legs or the feet as Anton refers to them so what makes this really neat is that you can take it out and switch it around. So right now we have it kind of in stake mode or yeah, stake mode where it goes into the ground like this. It's pointy so it's gonna stick into the ground very nicely and you don't have to worry about it moving around. So another good thing about this tripod is that it has a really good payload capacity. A uh, downside that we have is that it's really tall and also it's really, really heavy, which is really hard to move. You're making me suffer. Um, yeah, and as you can see, there's complete differences between the two. Okay, so let's go over the mount and all the features. So on the very top here, you can see a dove plate. Um, and it's a dual dove plate, meaning that um, there is two ways to attach uh, a telescope. There is either with a, a small or a large dovetail. For example, the Mighty Mount, our issue with it was you can only use a large dovetail, so, uh, so a, um, a Los Mendy style dovetail. But this one you can use both, so it's pretty cool. I'm really happy with that. So uh, then you can see some knobs all over the place. So there is some knobs here to tighten the dove plate. And then we have two knobs here for this axis. It's on two knobs, like that. And we have two more knobs on this other axis over here. And this one will rotate like this. So each axis has two knobs. We have the counterweight bar here, which is, uh, you know, just a basic as usual, I mean, like every mount. And then we have uh, a six plus six plus three kilograms uh, counterweights here, which is what we need for our SVX-130. And then you might see a big knob here. This one is used for the altitude adjustment for the polar alignment. And the good thing about this knob is that you can actually remove this once you're done. So if you're afraid that your cables are gonna get stuck, or if you do, or if you live very, very up north or maybe south, and your mount uh, counterweight bar is going to touch this, you can simply remove it like that. So it's pretty cool. Usually we just remove it just because uh, we don't want the cables to get in there. 
Uh, so it's pretty cool uh, that it's removable like that. Okay, so the wind got insane, so I'm going to try to lip sync this next clip. Here we go. And then these two big knobs here on each side is to loosen the altitude uh, axis. So if you want to go up and down while trying to find Polaris, you can loosen these two knobs and then use the big one in the center there to actually go up and down with the mount in altitude. And then we have the uh, azimuth knobs on the back here. So we have two knobs, kind of like most mounts. So to go left and right when trying to find Polaris, you can use these two. Now, let's say you go to a new location, for example, and you're not used to how uh, Polaris appears in the sky, and you're way off when it gets dark. Uh, if your mount is too heavy or your telescope is too heavy, you can actually unlock those four uh, knobs at the base there, and there is some leeway, some, um, some range, where you can actually rotate the mount itself a bit, so left and right, uh, you will see here there's a slot. Uh, it's not huge, but it's, I think it's enough for most uh, occasions. So if you're way off when trying to pull our line, you can attempt to loosen these four base knobs and try to rotate the mount left or right, and then see if you have Polaris in your scope. Then you can tighten the screw again. Next, uh, as you can see, there is one main cable here, uh, this one here. This is how the mount, uh, this part of the mount communicates with the brain of the mount uh, over here at the bottom. And then uh, we have another cable going from here uh, to the hand controller, which is over here. The hand controller, which we probably will never use, uh, but just to show you guys, this is how it connects to the hand controller. And then we would connect usually two more cables. We would connect the power cable, so it would go down to the ground, to a battery or, or an AC um, port. And then lastly, we would connect a USB slash RS-232 cable, so from here, to our mini PC on the telescope or directly to the PC and the camera and all that. So, so yeah, yeah, I think that, think that was it for the mount. I think I showed you guys everything. Um, so yeah, that was that's the mount and all the features. So one of the best features of this mount is that it has absolute encoders and that's why it's so expensive. So I'm going to show you guys uh, what the encoders look like by opening the mount like that, just kidding. <laughs> I won't do it because if I do, uh, as you can see, there's like a bunch of stickers everywhere here. Um, if I do, I will lose all the warranty. So I'm not gonna show you guys, but uh, it's in there. Trust me. He's hilarious. It's <laughs> my joke. Instead of spending the next 10 minutes explaining what encoders are, Check out Dylan O'Donnell's awesome video about encoders on his EQ8R Pro, where he explains it perfectly. Absolute encoders are the best type of encoders for astrophotography mounts. Both Dylan's EQ8R Pro and our 10 micron GM1000 HPS have more than 10 million ticks. The mount knows exactly where it is in the sky, even if you unlock the clutches and move it manually, and even if you lose power. The encoders also help with guiding. This mount does not have any backlash whatsoever, and you can also create a sky model to image completely unguided. We don't bother with models because you need to redo the process if you move the mount, and uh, we usually always image from different places. Balancing the mount is a bit difficult because both axes are extremely loose compared to the previous mounts we tried. One cool feature is that you can use a hand controller to ask the mount how good your balance is. And after slowing left and right, it will tell you exactly if you need to move the counterweights up or down to achieve perfect focus. One more thing we love about this mount is how quiet it is. Our Atlas EQG mount is super noisy and sounds like a broken tank whenever it's loose. And flew right towards it. <sighs> As for this 10 micron mount, it is almost completely silent, and so quiet when slowing across the sky. <sighs> so that was really awesome, setting everything up for the first time. It's very exciting, and we really like the way that it turned out. You know, we're very excited to you know, actually do something with it. And we won't be doing the first light just yet. We'll be, uh, we're actually making a video about our first light with this mount and uh, we're very excited to show it to you guys. That's gonna be like, eh, soon. soon.
We also have an uh, unboxing video uh, on its own, so you'll have a, a full unboxing video of the mount, tripod and all that. The glory. Uh, as one video really soon as well. So we'll see you guys next time and uh, kiss guys. Yeah.